Hello everyone, welcome to day 3rd of February Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is 4 sum 2. Here in this question we are given 4 arrays, nums 1, nums 2, nums 3, nums 4. We need to identify the number of tuples such that nums of i plus uh, nums 1 of i plus nums 2 of j plus nums 3 of k plus nums 4 of l happens to be equal to 0. All such unique combinations of i, j, k, l, m we need to count those up. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward to understand. Here they are provided with one example. I'll be talking about this example as well as three ways to solve this question in very time complexities. So let's quickly move on to the PPT. For some two, lead code 454. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. So let's try and understand the question and represent it in mathematical format. Here we are given four arrays A, B, C and D and there are various elements in these arrays. If I need to represent this equation mathematically, how can I do that? It's pretty simple and straightforward. A of i plus b of j plus c of k plus d of l all should sum up together to give a sum of 0. And this formula itself gives you the intuition for the naive approach, which is nothing but order of n raised to power 4 square approach. So you can create four loops one for a array other one for b then for c then for d and the time complex and you can check if this equation is met then you increment your answer the the count uh, variable and the time complexity for this approach would be order of n square which is too bad can we improvise this yes we can the next approach that i am going to propose is of order of n cube approach how the first and the foremost step is to do uh, the sorting on all the elements this array, this array, this array, and this array. Then going ahead, what you can do? You can create two loops, one for A, one for B. For C and D, you can use a two-pointer approach since you have already sorted those arrays up. You can k, uh, keep the value of k as zero. You can keep the value of L as D length minus one. You can see these would be the starting points for your uh, K and L and with each iteration the value of k will be reduced depending upon the current sum similarly depending upon the current sum you will operate on the value of k we have been doing two pointers since from quite some time now and i hope you guys are comfortable with it if we go by this approach the time complexity would go up till order of n cube now comes the question can we improvise it further the answer is yes how let's look at it and for this we will be using maps the time complexity for this approach that I am going to propose would be order of n square. So stay tuned. So let's reiterate the mathematical formula. Here it is given as a of i plus b of j plus c of k plus d of l is equal to 0. Then what do I do next? I simply move these two values to the RHS side here, over here. What is the updated mathematical formula? a of i plus b of j is equal to minus of c of k plus d of l. And if I need to represent this in sums how can i do that it's very simple uh, this value can be termed together as sum of a comma a underscore uh, s and s underscore a b is equal to minus of negation of sum of s underscore c d so i've just replaced this with this variable and this with this variable now again to reiterate we can say that sum of c d happens to be equal to negation of sum of a b if you have understood this logic, you have understood 90% of the algo. The final approach needs to con be concluded and let's look at it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create two for loops, one for iterating over the A array, one for iterating over the B array, and I'll calculate all possible sum that are there across A of i plus B of j. As I am calculating these sums, I'll also store uh, this in the map where the key would be equal to sum of s underscore a b and along with this we'll store the frequencies or the number of instances this sum is occurring we'll be using this frequency value to actually compute your answer so once you have successfully built this up the next step is a cakewalk for you in the final step what i'm what i'm gonna do i'll use the c and d array I'll create two for loops again, one for iterating the C array, other one for iterating over the D array. And again, I'll go and identify the sum that is occurring across C and D, all possible such sums, C of K plus D of L. And once we have calculated all such possible sums, what I'll do, 
I'll use this equation. S underscore C D happens to be equal to minus of S underscore A B. So we have this information in the map of uh, S underscore A B at how many instances and or at what frequencies it is occurring across A and B array. So we can use and exploit this information using the sum that we have just calculated. So you have S underscore C D sum. You ch you negate it up. You find out the S underscore A B sum that would be equal to negation of S underscore C D. So you have this information. You neg you create a new variable S underscore A B that is equal to negation of S underscore C D, and you can check the frequencies at which this is occurring in your frequency map. So that will contribute to one possible answer. You can create a cumulative sum. of all such instances where this equation is met and your work is done the time complexity of this approach is pretty straightforward it's order of n square to conclude it finally let's quickly look at the coding section and everything will be crystal clear over there so let's move on to it as i told i'll create a map where the key would be equal to sum of ab comma frequency all such instances where this sum is found out across a and b arrays so i create a loop i iterate over it i create another loop i iterate over the b array i calculate the sum underscore ab value i uh, check the uh, the frequency that exist i add one to it and update my map once i have successfully done this i go ahead and create my answer variable i again start two loops this time across c and d arrays i create a new variable sum cd and i create another new variable that is equal to sum ab and is equal to negation of sum cd as i talked about in the presentation i go and check what is the frequency of this sum ab in my frequency map and i simply add it to the answer because we you have found out one successful instance and in the end you simply return this answer variable so let's try this up accepted it's 36 times faster which is pretty fine i guess because you can't go and beyond this and increase the reduce the time complexity so the time complexity of this approach is of order of n square this brings me to the end of today's session also we have already solved couple of questions on similar lines some series i'm attaching the playlist in the reference below so if you are interested do have a look at it